welcome to Diverse Conversations. This is Ashka Patel and thank you very much for joining me once again for yet another interesting conversation where we're going to be speaking with a Canadian pharmacy innovator. Um, this is a continuation of our series that we had launched um, and are excited to feature our second guest on this, on this series. It's none other than Thomas Bogdanovich. Thomas is a licensed pharmacist who holds a Doctor of Pharmacy from the University of Toronto and is passionate in driving pharmacy practice towards its expanded scope of practice. As a director of pharmacy tech startup, Pharmacist Diagnostic Corporation, Thomas's vision is to evolve and empower the pharmacy profession. Pharmacist promotes transformative practice change by equipping pharmacies with powerful clinical software solutions that enable pharmacists to practice to their fullest potential. And to prove that point, uh, Thomas works as a clinical pharmacist and uses the pharmacist platform to conduct professional services with his patients remotely. Thomas was a former vice president of the UFT's Pharmaceutical Technology and Entrepreneurship Club and is a current member of various business accelerator networks. Pharmacist was nominated and later won the 2022 Global Health and Pharma Tech Biotechnology Award in Digital Health for the best pharmacy minor ailment software. Thomas's innovative and entrepreneurial spirit first emerged during his employment at UHN's Kremble Research Institute, where he worked as a drug design research appointee. He modeled blood vein barrier uh, penetration of small molecule drugs using machine learning algorithms and engineered a blood vein barrier calculator. Um, the app is also currently available for desktop computers. So it's going to be a very interesting conversation with Thomas, who brings a unique perspective of a pharmacist who's passionate about digital health. And I'm very excited to have this conversation and unwrap, uh, you know, the layers um, of uh, what it took for him to, uh, to uh, you know, choose the path that, he, that he's on today. And also, um, you know, where does he see himself going next? So please help me in welcoming Thomas. So welcome back. And here we have Thomas joining us. Thomas, welcome. And thank you for taking the time to have this conversation with us. <laughs> Thanks, Aske. Yeah, thanks for the invite. Awesome. Awesome. So, um, Thomas, I was speaking with uh, about you earlier in, in terms of, um, you know, the journey that you've had so far and um, how you, um, you know, how you're currently the CEO of Pharmacess. But it would be great to kind of hear from your perspective, uh, you know, what has your journey been like uh, from being a pharmacy uh, student to where you are today? Hmm. Yeah, well, it actually started way back in a business plan competition from school, actually. In, in, in third year, you know, PharmD, we just you know, got together a couple of colleagues and we said, hey, you know, why don't we, uh, why don't we do something for, for, for this upcoming competition? You know, minor ailments has just been announced way back in you know, 2019. And, and it was, well, you know, a, 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 an advancement was announced on minor ailments, right? Like this thing was is a work in progress for, for like a decade now, right? Absolutely. So, <laughs> So, so we said, Hey, like, you know, we all share a certain passion about, you know, what we, you know, want this profession to be. We were so excited to, you know, enter appies back in the day and, and do all sorts of, you know, um, you know, patient pharmacist type of consultation work, right. And, and, you know, learning about all these kind of ailments and, and we wanted to put our skills to use. Right. So, so we said, Hey, let's, let's do this. I mean, it's a new upcoming opportunity and, and, you know, it went well, I mean, we, we won the business plan competition back in uh, November uh, 2019. And then we just uh, kind of, you know, decided to take it to the next kind of step. Right. So so we applied to different, um, you know, incubators, accelerators. Uh, we, we use some of the funding and, you know, uh, we look for, for more team members, developers, right. and we got a base product. And then we just kind of took it from there. We, we got some, some uh, you know, attraction from, from different organizations, like investing groups and then, uh, pharmacy chains and we said, hey, like maybe there's something here. Mm -hmm. so I just <laughs> that's just, amazing. Just like that. yeah. I think you're not giving yourself enough credit for the for the innovation that you're trying to um, you know implement within the field of pharmacy and, and in healthcare at large. Uh, but I really like you know it, it's I think what what's commendable is that you were able to take an idea and bring it to life. Um, and so and that's one of the most difficult tasks, if I may say, is to do that, right? Because um, especially in the space of healthcare, um, prior to the pandemic, to get funds for digital health uh, technology uh, was pretty difficult because, you know, the mm -hmm. traditional way of conducting healthcare business was the acceptable status quo, if I may say, um, mm -hmm. and nobody really wanted to challenge that. So kudos to you for challenging that and, and you know, trying to uh, do something different in, in terms of addressing a patient need and a gap. Well, uh, I 
I don't know. I'm, I'm just like anybody there that, that just really wants something and, and they just kind of pursue it. And, and, you know, there's a lot of you know, luck and, and I'm definitely yes. grateful for, you know, the, the pieces kind of falling in together and in the way they did. And, you know, uh, and honestly, is is if you want it, you, you can do it. You know, just, just put your mind. That, that's kind of my motto, right? Like it, just, just work at it and, you know, yeah. it'll happen. Right. It's true. I mean, hard work definitely is required uh, for any idea to be brought to life. So for sure. So tell me a little bit more about Farm Assess. Like, you know, what what does Farm Assess uh, provide in terms of service right. um, or product? Yeah, yeah. So it it, uh, it actually is all about that that initial sort of um, that that feeling of wanting to to enable pharmacists to do you know all the stuff that they learned in school and and, and be happy about the change they're making in a patient's lives. I mean. It's really all about, you know, as one of our mentors said, transformative practice change. And honestly, that really resonated with me. I said, hey, you know, that that's I got a I, I got a copyright <laughs> trademark. I got to do whatever I need to do to, to keep that line because it really is about transformative practice change. Because you know, we see so much potential, and we just want to equip pharmacists with the tools, the resources, the technology, whatever they need. You know, mm-hmm. and and Justin Bates at OPA is doing a great job. You know, advocating for pro- yes. uh, for the profession. I think that's that is kind of, you know, that vision of, of enabling pharmacies to, you know, to really be like almost kind of like healthcare hubs. I mean, that's really what we want to do. And, and um, you know, so, so what we do there is, is we make, you know, software, you know, these, these tools to, to enable pharmacies to just spend, you know, less time on automated, you know, on, I'm right. sorry, on manual work and just automate, you know, the, those, those processes. And, mm. and, specifically around when it comes to these new opportunities like like minor ailments right stuff right. that we really see as um a, an incoming opportunity that that is really going to be a popular service like we, mm. we just really you know I, and the question is why do we why do we feel that i, I mean i guess it's just because um i, I think that's actually a, a hidden value that a lot of patients don't really even know about i mean they yes. can just go to a pharmacy and and they can hey they can get treated for eczema in you know i think it's eight out of ten provinces something mm-hmm. like that and maybe maybe a bit less you know the, the minor ailment count varies per province but yes but it's su- such a huge value whereas opposed whereas opposed you know if you just go to a pharmacy and you just you, you know go in there oh i just want my regular meds the the value there it, you m- i might as well just go to amazon and get you know this 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 shipment you know what, what's the point of even going in you know? I, so so we really see that that, that future of pharmacy being something to to provide the patients, you know, when they need something kind of more maybe urgent or or kind of some clinical advice about some some of the medications that they dispense and, and OTC mm. items and and so so that's what we're focusing on, right? So so minor ailments, right, is a big right. thing. Vaccinations, right? Like okay. like when 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 the pandemic hit, I said, wow, you know, we gotta we gotta do something here. I mean, we didn't uh, we didn't move into that space uh, as fast as I think we should have. Right. Uh, we, we were still, you know focused on on minor ailments for for a, a wide portion of that uh, pandemic but then but then once it was ready we we deployed our system and and you know we we, we got some for for vaccinations point of care tests um and uh and really just digital appointment uh, handling of any kind so so those modules uh, along with meds checks you know medication right. review th- th- those opportunities are really something that, that pharmacists is trying to to you know you know put into pharmacy practice a little bit more efficiently right? right get pharmacists doing that instead of just you know the regular you know just filling and counting and and say here you go and, and cash them out you know we we really see the role of the pharmacy to be something much much greater than just that, uh, that you know. that's fantastic <laughs> i mean it, obviously you know I, I guess it's also your training as a pharmacist is if you have this vision for what pharmacists um you know should be doing um especially in a community pharmacy setting and i think that's what you're trying to model with pharmacists as to how how to bring that vision to life through technology um and that's that's incredible so i guess that's kind of like leading to my my favorite question of all the times um and and, and it's because i know how difficult it is to innovate within uh within the field of pharmacy and in healthcare uh you know how difficult was it for you um to once you had your minimum viable product and once you had your um you know when when you were in beta testing and whatever uh that stage where you had a product that was ready somewhat ready like you know ready to be implemented like how did you mm-hmm. were there any challenges you faced um to you know bring in or buy a, or generate buying from you know potential customers or clients um to to mm-hmm. kind of jump on to the pharmacist ship mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's actually a pretty loaded question because <laughs> we, we can start to sort of layer like, um, what kind of service are we talking yes. about? Because if it's if it's vaccination, I mean, hey, everybody in the pandemic was craving, you know, something yes. for that. It, it was right, right. But if we look at, say, minor ailments and mm-hmm. we say we approach a market that's been around for, you know, decades, like Saskatchewan, Alberta, they say, hey, well, you know, I already have this and, you know, this this PDF uh, form filling service from the government, you know, does, does you know, well enough. And, and all my staff have been using it for, for years, decades. You know, let's just keep using that. But but then uh, but then when you you start to segment out, you know, the, the specific need in, in specific provinces where maybe this this uh, this sort of form filler is actually a paid service, then, hey, mm-hmm. okay, there's some cost savings that we can introduce. So, so so there's a lot of sort of barriers that that are actually almost province specific, depending where you are. Right. And for Ontario is the biggest attraction because Ontario, we don't actually have anything uh, for for the service. Right. Yes. So, so we trace back. It's interesting because you think, OK. Way back when, uh, you know, 2007 or, or whenever it was that that minor ailment prescribing was was you know initiated in, in Saskatchewan and then Alberta and all that, it started with actually this this PDF form filler. But mm-hmm. my question is, what if it actually started with something electronic, right? So so that exactly. that is the transformative practice change I'm talking about because then pharmacists say this is you know the the baseline. This is what I got to use. I, I I don't need to use these old you know sort of uh, traditional systems of printing out a form, writing it down, scanning it in, mm-hmm. because because that that's not what I've been trained on. If I've been trained from the get go to use something electronic, I think that's the biggest game changer. And, and I think there's been a lot of attention, a lot of attraction for minor ailments. So I, I really believe that this opportunity might be sufficient to actually move, you know, the the, the profession, you know, what is 45, 50 percent of you know the pharmacy market in Canada, you know, right. Ontario market, right? To move that that massive market, well, massive relative to the other provinces, um, towards this digital future, towards this kind of automated, you know, say goodbye to the PDFs and the old, you know, method of doing things, mm-hmm. and you know, welcome this this new from the get. I think that's the the biggest, you know, um, you know, uh, actually barrier that we're that we're avoiding, right? Because right. because I would say that the barrier is actually introducing and training and getting pharmacists used to these old archaic systems. That is a barrier because then you have to introduce this this almost this re-education process. Hey, go away from that and, and introduce this. And and right. it, that that honestly was was one of the biggest barriers because it's like you, you got to tell them, hey, and you know, there's this and they say, wow, that's so cool. I mean, yeah, I, I really want to use it. So then so then they're excited. And then they go for it and they say, well, you know, my staff has just been using this other thing for 10 years. You know, what do I do? And, and that was the case for a lot of the, well, well for, for particularly the one province, which had that service for free. But when we introduced it to, you know, Alberta, where it's a paid service, they found a bit more value, but it was still kind of like a, a sort of a retraining. So mm-hmm. then that's when you had to target the market that was right for that, that, that yes. wanted to be. So they said, hey, I want to do, I, I want something more digital. And you just approach those. So the barrier, I would say probably, probably that. Okay. Got it. Well, no, I mean, you, you hit it kind of right in the head, right? Because um, I think, you know, sometimes when we are having broader conversations, we kind of look at it from a national perspective, Uh, but you raise a very, very good point that we often forget is um, even within Canada, provincially, we have such a varied scope of practices, especially like, you know, just even speaking from a pharmacist perspective, um, that it makes it sometimes very difficult to standardized services. And and I think, um, you know, having technology support such um, workflows, I think is is critical um, and moving forward, because I can only see more services being added on to the pharmacist um, to complete um, because of, you know, the burden that's being created on health on the healthcare system. And I think our our current times are a testament um, to how, you know, burdened our healthcare system is and then you know community pharmacy would be uh, playing a very pivotal role in the next decade I think um, in, in terms of how we deal with primary care um, in, in, from a community lens especially so this is um, but I, I agree with you uh, I think the whole challenge of having uh, a service covered versus not covered and who pays for it mm-hmm. and then <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't pay for it? Uh, it makes a huge difference, um, even from an adoption perspective. And I think uh, this was a very good reminder that we all needed to have, because uh, sometimes we forget about this side, right? Because we are, we are so focused on the patient care aspect of the care we provide, um, that we sometimes forget the repercussions that has on the services that we are even supposed to, like, you know, that we can mm-hmm. avail for ourselves, right? 
And um, we see that for smoking cessation. You know, yes. it's um, it, it's actually a service. I was reading a study about it when I was, you know, embracing myself for it you know, years ago. And uh, the service was just, it was not as uh, popular as the government was hoping it to be. Yeah. And, and it's in Ontario. And, and for me, I was like, hey, well, this is such a great service. But but you know what? I started to compare and contrast. I said, well, in other provinces, like in uh, say Saskatchewan, Alberta, we can actually prescribe for that smoking cessation product yes. but in Ontario you need a special you know does need a special license and so, so it's a little bit uh there's a little bit of barriers there and and uh certainly just just going back to the cost perspective um even though I and, and just kind of playing devil's advocate even though smoking cessation is actually pretty well you know it reimbursed it's you know 40 dollars mm-hmm. for the initial and then so on and so forth it's uh, it's actually a matter of uh, doing it and and getting it out there without so many of these you know barriers because you know there's so many check boxes that need to mm-hmm. fill you know they're, they're, okay is this patient you know actually ODB eligible did, you know did they you know receive this kind of service in the past and kind of what are all these eligibility criteria and 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 that process can be a little bit more kind of you know there's some some gaps there like it's 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 tough to you know find the right patients and then pursue them and you know get it working so so that's kind of you know it, it's almost like they have to come to you first and I, I find that's that's you know kind of similar to minor ailments they have to come to you but I just think mm-hmm. it's a lot more common I think a lot of people are going to come to minor ailments you know a lot more common than they do with smoking cessation especially given that we can't actually make the prescription right there unless yes. you have that special license of course but so so there are those other barriers as well when we, you know when it comes to kind of regulations and what you can can't do mm-hmm. and so i think that's one one other thing that i kind of wanted to mention is is really it's this this 13 conditions that ontario's coming out with i think it's just the beginning we have yes. to have more it, it we absolutely 13 is just you know it's it's baby numbers i mean we mm-hmm. need to get to well i at one point, Saskatchewan was at 28. I think now it's at 27. Uh, they removed uh, one of them from uh, from you know their set list. But, mm-hmm. but you know we we need at least you know we need to get up there because if if Ontario wants to make this uh, what it I think intends to, to to be a service that a lot of patients look up for yes. and save cost, then we gotta just add more. It's um, absolutely. Maybe they, I agree. I agree. I mean, I mean, the the ideal goal would be unrestricted, right? Uh, Where there would be no no restrictions. I mean, pharmacists should be able to use their professional judgment. And I think we're already trained to do so. uh, Because Mm -hmm. you'd be kind of looking to see if there are any red flags that require more thorough attention or care for the patient versus something that can be treatable. Um, And I think we already have that training under our belts. It's just a matter of, um, you know, outsiders to our profession who need to realize that, um, that we have the training and the knowledge, um, and it just needs to be tapped into further. But I I agree, like it is definitely a challenge. And I think the more barriers we add to a service, for example, just like you mentioned, like having criteria saying, uh, and stricter, the more stricter a criteria is, I think it tends to be a, a huge barrier to that service yeah. being adopted to its fullest, right? Um, and I and, and you brought up a really good example with the smoking cessation like that program held a lot of promise like you know I I remember like I was in pharmacy school at that time when it was launched uh, so we were trained for it and it we were so excited because we had the authority uh, to prescribe two (laughs) prescription drugs right Um, and we were like oh this is fantastic varnaclin and bupropion and this is fantastic and but it was like how do you now go about finding these patients that you can Mm -hmm. you know work with to Mm -hmm. to kind of uh, use this expanded scope of practice that you have and I think that's where sometimes it's very easy for it to be forgotten rather than being tapped into to be utilized um mm-hmm. and i think uh, you as you mentioned like you know automation plays a huge role because if the pharmacist is constantly overworked in a community pharmacy setting how do you expect them to you know kind of stop think what services should be required for by a patient uh like that analyzation doesn't happen and, and i think that's where also mm-hmm. a missed opportunity for a lot of um you know clinical services to be implemented in a community community setting mm-hmm. but I would not take away, like, you know, I do not want to be speaking a lot because I, I do want to hear your thoughts on a lot of other topics that, would, uh, that you know, we, we kind of identified. Um, and I, I do want to go back to pharmacists. Uh, so in terms of, you know, when you were launching pharmacists um, and when you had, uh, when you, when you were ready to launch the product, 
any um, you know interesting situations, challenges that you faced, or or even any facilitators? Like you know, did you did you have any um, you know any supports uh, that you would like to recognize? Like in, in in terms of what helped launch the company into existence and and bring the product to market? Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. There, there was so so many people you know through, throughout the journey that I can thank, and uh, actually one of the first people that actually uh, you know promoted this uh, business plan accomplished the heat. You know, Tom, this is a, a really cool thing. You should you yes. should do it. I mean, you know, you know, go ahead and do it, and you know, get yourself a team. And and then uh, and and she was actually sort of one of our mentors in the early days, and and I still talk to her now. You know, how, you know, how's it going, type of thing. Um, and Monica got him. I mean, she was fantastic. She started the business plan competition, right? She, she was one of the, uh, you know, the, the uh, hosts and, and managers and organizers, right, right of, of that back in the day when, when I was doing that in third year. And, uh, and you know, she, she just gave all sorts of really meaningful advice and, you know, even steered me a little bit in this direction of entrepreneurship, because actually it's so funny. I, uh, as one of my mentors, I approached her um, about pharmaceutical industry advice because I, I was so eager to you know, go into that field. And then um, and then, you know, she, she, you know, really made me realize that the career is actually a really zigzag line. I mean, it's going to go through all different, you know, you, you can't plan it. I mean, you know, sometimes these opportunities just, just mm -hmm. you know, uh, manifest and, and, you know, you have to, you know, pursue it or don't. And, and I think, you know, this is kind of like something, something like that, right? I, I was not yep. planning to, to kind of, you know, take a total shift and, and go down this road, but, but the opportunity came and I was passionate. So, so, you know, and, and people that supported that, supported that vision and, and that change and to really say, Hey, just do it. If you're passionate, if you actually see it, those people, I mean, there's, there's, so, there's a number of them and, and the, you know, uh, friends and family are huge and, and different, you know, pharmacy mm -hmm. associates that, that really motivated me and said, Hey, you know, you know pursue this. So, um, Definitely. I mean, without without that sort of motivational support, it, it would be, you know, it'd be a, it'll be a little bit more difficult, right? Because you'd, you'd be questioning yourself. You know, you'd Absolutely. be saying, yeah, my, my. but uh, but no, with with all of that kind of, uh, you know, um, almost it's, it's almost market validation in a way, mm -hmm. because they tell you, no, that this is there is there's a real need and a gap here. Just do it. So so that's that's important, I think, with any sort of um, decision almost that that you're making that has kind of long term impact. You know, you got to be. Yeah, absolutely sure. absolutely and i'm glad that you found yourself that mentor um that circle of um, supporters because i think in entrepreneurship uh, more so than anything yeah. else it, you always need that because the journey in itself is such a roller coaster going up and down and turns you completely upside down like at times where you would not least expect it so um i think um you know i, I agree with you 100 percent on that and on that positive note you know any highlights or achievements you wish to share about pharmacists um as a company that um you know any milestones or anything um, that our viewers uh, can learn more about from you, about your company. Yeah, yeah, no, no, for sure. Um, so, so uh, we we launched the product uh, about uh, January, February. Uh, so it's about end of January, right, twenty twenty two. And so we've just been scaling, you know, out west, you know, introducing to different Alberta and Saskatchewan locations. Now we're in Manitoba. Uh, we're in, you know selling the uh, appointment module with with refills and meds checks here in Ontario. And, wow. uh, and and we have a very close partnership, which we're very grateful to uh, to to uh, Philware and then Pack for You. Nice. And, and these were organizations, uh, namely uh, Pack for You. Is, this is an organization I actually yeah, I'm a pharmacist. I work part time with, and we really see eye to eye on what the future of pharmacy is. And yes. and you know we we work together. And we say, hey, I mean, you know, would would this feature be be good? How does this you know kind of pan out for your for your staff? And and you know, I'm there, you know, kind of hand side by side with, with the yes. pharmacist working on, you know, all these kind of reviews and consultations. So, so I think that's, uh, you know, that, that was uh, kind of an, an achievement being able to, to foster these relationships and, and kind of grow together, right. Mm -hmm. Working with, you know, Phil, where knowing what the needs are, right. Phil, where uh, they, 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 they serve quite a quick, quick, quite a, quite a number of right. Ontario locations, right. With a dispensing system. And, and we, we work together and say, hey, I mean, how about this integrated system for, mm -hmm. say, refilling medications? You know, now it goes directly into the management software. So it's just, you know, patient to management software, no phone call required, you know, stuff right. like that. You know, the, those kind of little small kind of achievements, I think, you know, really shape the, the what the product becomes because you, you learn from your partners. You learn from your Absolutely. Um, other than that, I mean, the, we, we were recognized um, in 2022, uh, just just actually before yes. um, 2022, by uh, Global Health and Pharma. They uh, they awarded us uh, the best minor ailments health uh, software. So 
uh, that was kind of cool. I, yeah, I, I mean, I, I really wasn't expecting it. They, they, they just sent some kind of email and I just, you know, I, you know, I, I did all these kind of follow-ups and, and whatnot, you know, and, and they did some evaluation and, and no, I'm, I'm glad and, and, you know, maybe that, that might, you know, help down the road, kind of get the word out about, you know, minor ailments. Absolutely. Well, look at you go representing Canada on a global uh, scale. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, no, no, not there yet. Not there yet. I, I, I wish. I mean, it, Maybe, it's okay. Maybe it's soon. a work in progress. And you have, I, um, you know, I think it's very fair to say that you've just started, uh, like your, your product was launched just in January of this year. So, you know, we're, we're still in the very infancy stages of your startup. And I'm, I'm really excited for the journey uh, you'll be, uh, you know, that awaits you in the near future. And I'm sure it's only onwards and upwards from here. Um, and, and with that, I think, uh, you know, I, I definitely do see you as an inspiration to, um, you know, especially when it comes to innovation and entrepreneurship um, in healthcare and in pharmacy, uh, you know, if, uh, you know, how do you describe your entrepreneurship experience so far? Um, mm -hmm. and, and again, like, you know, the, I feel like a, there's a lot of pharmacy students who watch these podcasts as well. So if there's anything um, that you wish to share uh, about any advice for aspiring startup innovators um, mm -hmm. and inventors. <laughs> well, uh, honestly, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I heard this once and I don't know where, but uh, but but it, it really is about, you know, kind of never giving up. And, and honestly, you know, it's it's tough. I mean, it's tough. You know, I, I find myself, you know, you know, we all find ourselves struggling at one point or another. And you ask yourself, you know, sh should we just you know give up almost? Right. Like it is it just it's too much. So the, the aspect of kind of what is it? I think it's called grit, right? Like perseverance, mm -hmm. you know, being able to just work through those hard times that long term vision. Yes. is is important uh, and for any of those pharmacy students you know growing up um, that was what helped you know helped me kind of you know keep my composure uh, mm -hmm. throughout all those kind of tough times is being able to you know keep your eye on the long-term vision because all of the smaller problems go away you know if you have an eye on you know say the prize right you say you know that you know this is what you want this is what you want to see right. and you know you're going to do what it requires to, to make that change, right? Make mm -hmm. that change in, in whatever field you are in. And in this case, it's pharmacy. You want to see the profession become, you know, great. You want to see it become, wow, you know, patients are saying, holy crap, you know, I can I go here. And it's almost like a, like a clinic at, at some point, you know, and I, and, and that vision there, it's like, if, if the, the pharmacy students, whatever kind of vision they have, if they can just keep, you know, not forget about that, because it's easy to forget, especially yes. when you're, you know, all these issues maybe come up and, all, you know, world kind of comes crashing down. But if you can hold on to that positive thought and, and why you're doing it, it's just easy to get, get past it because then it's like, okay, well, you know, this is just one step and, you know, it's just one step in, in all of this, you know, sort of staircase. And mm -hmm. I, I would say, you know, things kind of fit together if you just kind of hold on, you know. Thank you. Thank you for that. I think it was a, it was a reminder I needed myself today. So thank you. <laughs> um, you know, I, I really like that, you know, keep, um, keep the long-term vision in mind so the smaller problems go away and they definitely do. Um, and I think it, as long as you realign with the, with the purpose that you started with, um, you know, it, it definitely mm -hmm. helps you kind of see the relativity of the current uh, situation. And sometimes it's not that big of a deal. Right. Um, with that said, you know, how can we promote innovation within the pharmacy community? Um, you know, anything, um, anything that any resources that helped you um, or, you know, um, any, I, I guess this is reflecting on your experience, right? But like, you know, how do you see uh, that we can do better um, as a profession to mm -hmm. kind of embrace innovation more than uh, what mm -hmm. we do today? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I, I um, you know, I was asked this uh, the other day as well, and, and I was thinking about it, and um, and actually, I, I think it really does come down to a parallel I mentioned with um, kind of what we grew up with, you know, what do we learn in school, and what are the techniques and the methods, right? If you are taught like in a certain way, and and you you know you start your pharmacy in a certain way, you sort of get structured in a certain, and it's it's it, it may may not be easy to 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 get away from that structure, so. If, if uh, pharmacy and, and school can continue to, to you know, promote or, or have the, you know, and back in the day, I thought this class was, you know, oh, why, why am I taking this class? Why do I need to know about this class? It was, uh, it was, dry, it was uh, what was it called? It was like literature of drug information or something. Like, how, uh -huh. do, you, how do you find, you know, the, the answer to, to, you know, some questions using, you know, drug information resources. Yes. But actually, I think without that, I would just 
who knows what I'd be doing. Maybe I'd just be, you know, eventually, you know, when I'm working, people would say, hey, this is what we're using. But the fact that I was sort of, you know, braced for it, like I was like, okay, yeah, I know I'm going to be using this software to, you know, research all these questions, you know, here's ECPS and here's LexiComp. And I think that's actually kind of important because it puts and it grains a seed of how you're going to, you know, structure your, you know, your professional activities. And, and if we can just keep doing that and, and kind of, you know, maybe don't make the exam so hard because a lot of the exams just memorization, but, you know, you know, if you could just, just keep that in, in the school setting as, a, as a more of a practical thing, like, okay, you know, you have this, what are you going to do? You know, that's important because it trains the, the future generations of pharmacists, you know, what to use, what resources, electronic. And, and I think that's very important because as the future of pharmacy goes on, we rely heavily on automated processes mm -hmm. and tech at least have a basic understanding of how they work. And, and this, yes. you, know, you know, for example, uh, you know, may, maybe in the future, uh, vaccinations are going to be so popular and, and appointment scheduling for vaccinations are going to be so popular. Maybe they're going to say, hey, uh, you know, they're going to say, you know, it's, it's commonly used uh, to, mm -hmm. to do this one, two or three. And uh, you don't, you know, you don't pick up the phone and write the you know, patient's name down and have a list of like 150 names. Because exactly. You know, because we didn't know any better. And yes. maybe that's why that happened. And people, you know, I remember I was working at the pharmacy, we were using Excel spreadsheets at one point. I mean, they didn't really know any better because we didn't, you know, maybe that's what school is for, to, to really, you know, put you into a way to, to handle these situations and to say, hey, these are the resources, you know, get used to this digital technology because mm -hmm. it's important. Um, maybe that's a that's kind of where it is. And, and uh, as the future generations you know, are growing, they, they grow with the digital tech. You know, I think there's a huge shift in the pandemic. And yes. now all the years after, you know, this, this 2020 basically um, are just going to be used to it. They're going to say, hey, you know, they're going to join a pharmacy. Hey, where's my digital platform? I think they, they need to have a way for patients to, you know, so, so I think it's coming, you know, a, a mix of, you know, both those things, you know, it's, it's definitely, um, you know, on, on the right track, I, I would say. I mean, maybe I'm just optimistic, but. No, yeah. I share the same vision. I think um, the practice of pharmacy and healthcare, for that matter, is going to be hybrid, um, you know, moving forward, where mm -hmm. um, I think both digital and in person will have will hold their own important places. Um, it's just a matter of us, um, along with our patients to figure out, you know, how do you find that balance and that mix, right? Um, and and mm -hmm. I, I agree with you. I think, um, you know, I... I <laughs> Uh, knowing myself and, um, you know, being that studious kid that I was in pharmacy school, I wish mm -hmm. I had done better in terms of just thinking more broader, um, you know, instead of just getting good grades, right? Um, and, and just focusing on graduating and, and just, um, you know, graduating with the best marks uh, instead of that. <laughs> you really put a good point there, Aska, because that's what it is. And, uh, you know, this is something I actually, I, I come to the realization now with your comment is that so many pharmacy students are only focused about getting the grades, memorizing the stuff, because that's the way that the program is structured. Mm -hmm. They, they treat, you know, and, 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 you know, it's, it's very similar to undergrad where here's your exam and here's your kind of project. And, and, you know, it's very kind of, um, undergrad heavy kind of type of learning where, where I, I believe there should be a lot more practical experiences. And there were, there were definitely some, which was fantastic. I think there just needs to be more of that. Maybe, you know, maybe, maybe it is, you know, I remember questioning that back in the day and I think it came down to cost is very expensive to run all these sessions with, you know, all these kind of, uh, physicians or pharmacists coming in. But, but I really think that is important because, uh, because when we, uh, you know, get used to this way of studying, memorizing, uh, we become very kind of used to a certain, you know, uh, way of almost behaving. And, and it's, it's like the pharmacy profession, maybe, you know, you know, the pharmacists, you know, in the generations from, you know, some, some time ago that, that really were very regimented with their studies of just memorized, get in, get out, mm -hmm. done, you know, maybe that's kind of how we treat you know, some, 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 some of the, the real life scenarios in the profession, you know, it, it's a very kind of, you know, it, almost, you know, yes or no, it, it's kind yeah. of like a very, you know, but if we are able to sort of think bigger and sort of not be like robots memorizing done, you know, and focus really on the, the practical stuff, I think that would also be included in the recipe for, you know, transformation for the profession. I agree. You know? Oh my goodness. You, in a very few words, you have 
basically like, you know, there's a lot to unpack in what you just mentioned, but I agree with every single thing that you mentioned there. Um, you know, I have been a, a, a huge proponent. Um, I, th- I think now that I'm on the other side of schooling and, and you know, having a few years under my belt um, in, in real life experience, um, definitely, I think the curriculum needs to be also like, you know, more fluid um, and it needs to change mm-hmm. with the, the, the change in tides that we are seeing. Um, I think innovation fosters innovation. So unless, you know, we, 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 even at least provide students with with the avenues to explore innovation and i i'm happy to see that those changes are coming along right like all the pharmacy schools are now having business competitions Mm -hmm. um innovation digital health um you know but i feel like we can definitely do more uh because these as you mentioned this this nothing nothing of this is going away like everything we gain in the pandemic is staying um if only it's going to amplify in the future so it's like you know how do we prepare future practitioners who are well versed with mm-hmm. technology and and you know who will not be resorting to the old ways of doing business. Not that not that there's anything wrong with it, but I also feel like it it kind of impedes in the progress we are wanting to make as a profession. Um, but I really liked your your analogy of um, you know our thought process in school and and to how we bring that thought process to our our real life um, work culture. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it was kind of evident with, during the pandemic where you know we were seeing a lot of perspectives on <laughs> what we we're going to do with the expanded scope that testing and the vaccinations and everything else that was coming at the end of the day i'm very proud of our profession for stepping up um absolutely but it was uh, it was an interesting change process <laughs> to kind of see from the sidelines um mm-hmm. with that said though i think I, I just want to also since we're talking about the future how do you describe the future of pharmacy from through your eyes in the next five years <laughs> <laughs> future of pharmacy in the next five years uh five years i mean maybe it's it's too bold but i i really hope that uh, this uh, you know um, pharmacy changes to a more a health hub sort of approach where they become clinics right mm. so patients view pharmacies as a place where they can you know get uh, treatment and you know advice and they can you know maybe they have a wound or some kind of ailment happens they go there first and mm-hmm. it just makes sense it reduces healthcare care uh, cost and spend right. you know in total they, 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 they spend less they consume less time with, with physicians on, on basic things and so pharmacies can, are, are really well suited to do that you know, for many reasons, you know, accessibility, you know, you know just, just ease of access. They just, the, 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 you know, I think the most commonly first approached, uh, you know, healthcare practitioner. Uh, so, so all sorts of things. I think that's really the, the future there. And maybe it's mm-hmm. five, maybe it's 10 years, maybe it's 15. I think it's just going to keep evolving as time goes by, you know, right. starting with, you know, minor ailments. It's just going to, you know keep shifting, but the, the, you know, I think the bottleneck where, where, you know, as as we say in chemistry, the limiting reagent, it's, um, it's definitely uh, patient awareness because, you know, what good is minor ailments if no patients know about it, right? Exactly. So it, it, you know, I think there has, and this is what I'm trying to do with pharmacists, right, is to create this change, right, this movement where patients are like, wow, this is great, you know, like this is, this is a difference, you know, pharmacy is, you know, it's magnificent. I can go here and I can, get my uh, prescription for a UTI, you know, that happens, you know, uh, so frequently uh, mm-hmm. with, with so many, with so many individuals and, and they just, you know, it's, it's such a great thing for patients. So I think, you know, more patient awareness that comes on, you know, yes. we're, we're going to get there um, five, 10, 15, you know, who knows, but uh, I think that's, that's important. Um, you know, and then there's a lot of other things too. I mean, the, I'm just talking about the, uh, the, the pharmacies like, you know, mm. brick and mortar in person. I think there are definitely, you know, a rise in these kind of central fill pharmacies where yes. there's going to be these these bigger, almost kind of, uh, you know, in, in sort of packaging centers, right? Mm-hmm. And you know, like, like we've seen with Amazon, you know, the big purchase of, you know, uh, you know, you know, the, the delivery uh, yes. you know, company there, right? So, so it's it's delivering medications out to people, right? So that is 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 a huge, you know, value because you know now I can just get deliveries. So then what are these, you know, brick and mortar pharmacies going to resort to? I think yeah. clinical services are things that really add value, um, medication reviews, you know, mm-hmm. the, the amount of, you know, drug therapy problems we catch, right? So um, no, I think that's, that's definitely part of the future. Intra- yeah. Impressive. Um, I think it's a very optimistic future. And I, I really <laughs> do hope that, uh, you know, we'll, we'll reach that future, if not in five, at least in 10. Um, but we're, we, we can always remain hopeful. Um, and, you know, I guess to kind of wrap it all up and coming, you, know, you coming from a digital health space, especially, you know, how do you describe the future of digital health tech? You have already alluded to a little bit, but, you know, I would love to kind of hear some concluding thoughts on that as well from you. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, digital health is uh, definitely interesting because we saw it evolve uh, back in the early days. You know, there's maple and oh, that was such a cool thing, and you can mm -hmm. just see doctors now. And then, then you know, there's some pharmacy innovation that you can see pharmacists now. But but digital health, I think, you know, it's really going to be. I mean, in my mind, it, it would ideally be a one-stop shop where you know you can basically. It's it's almost like a maple in a way, but yes. it's it's you know it'll incorporate pharmacy services and say, okay, do you want uh, you know see this array of, of pharmacy services and and mm -hmm. we're going to have a way for maybe to to connect all of these independent stores right because we know right. chain pharmacies they have their own sort of you know digital health technologies in place um and and so that independents are kind of left on the side to kind of fend for themselves and say hey well what what can i do for my digital health right exactly. so i think i think you know if we can amass all of these independents together and provide them you know this the solution that that you know makes their life easy to you know, advertise their digital health you know, technologies, then that that I think would would, would be you know in in the horizon for for the mm -hmm. future for them, and I think many companies are uh, you know already on that you know they're, they're trying to to bring that vision to light and uh, you know that's that's fantastic and I'm, I'm you know I'm happy to be kind of in the mix of those companies trying to you know push this out and and um, you know it just wouldn't it be fantastic to just you know pick up your phone and say hey you know this is a pharmacy that there it is you know this is all the independence and 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 you have it all at your fingertips you know and and these pharmacies choose what they want to offer you know this is a refill is it a minor ailment you know exactly um, an appointment you know it's i i i really do believe that um, you know that's that's coming it's just a matter of um, of when and how right mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. I think uh, we are we are in the very early stages of innovation, especially in the digital pharmacy sector um, and digital health tech. So I think the opportunities to innovate are limitless at this point in time. And so I think uh, everyone, you know, if you have a vision, um, just making sure. I think we just do not want to fall into the traps of reinventing the wheel every single time. So if there are any opportunities where we can bring synergies together, I think that's you know that would help. Mm -hmm. I think even the system as as a whole, because the last thing you want is duplicate records being created at multiple points where the patient touches the healthcare system, right? So, uh, mm -hmm. but I, I mm -hmm. I'm really optimistic, just like you are, <laughs> um, <laughs> and I, I'm really very hopeful. But with that, Thomas, I'm going to wrap up this uh, with this session. But it was a pleasure having you, and thank you so much for the insights the amazing insights. I am, I have to say I'm very inspired uh, by the vision you have for pharmacy, for digital health, and, and you know, all the very best with pharmacists because um, I think it's only onwards and upwards from here. You're just getting started. So I, I'm really excited to, you know, see your journey forward from here onwards and, uh, and see the, mm -hmm. the amazing things um, that lies ahead for pharmacists and yourself as well. Well, thank you, Aska, and thanks for having me. And again, thanks for what you're doing, because without you, it's difficult to bring this patient awareness out, to bring awareness of pharmacy. I think what you're doing is absolutely aligned with what pharmacists needs. You know, I think it's it's really, you know, people people like us kind of feed from each other, yes. right? We, we, we need, you know, you know, we need this information to come out. We need patients to, to be excited. We need pharmacists to also know what's coming. So, so yeah, uh, kudos to you as well. for what Thank you're... you very much. Thank you. And with that, we'll wrap up the conversation, but I promise we'll have Thomas back in again <laughs> uh, as a check-in to see how he's doing at a future point in time for sure. But thank you for everyone joining and we will be sharing uh, the description uh, in the description box. Pharmacist information will be there as well as any contact information to reach Thomas if you have any questions. And with that, we'll sign off until next time.